Hi, this is Bob. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I've finished the assembly on the QRP guys DSB transceiver, digital transceiver, as it says right here. And uh, I wanted to show you some of the things here that I ran into. I was very impressed with, uh, with the uh, circuit board, with the layout, uh, with the circuits that I see. Got a real nice schematic with it. There's the schematic and uh, the parts uh, there was only one part that was missing it was a uh, 1000 picofarad monolithic ceramic capacitor a little yellow one I dug around in my junk box and I had one just like it so I put that in rather than bothering QRP guys it would cost them more to send that by mail than it would be to buy a new part someplace but I had one in the junk box same size and color so I used it I also tested it before I put it in here I tested all of the resistors all of the capacitors I tested everything that I could test I tested the little uh, the little pots here you'll notice that I put a heat sink in for those uh, three output transistors and I had a piece of uh, 50 thousandths thick uh, copper which I cut and put on there and used that for the heat sink. I also put a little dab of the white heat sink compound under each one of the final transistors. It is in the receive mode right now and when you put this little jumper on here it goes into the transmit mode. Now as you can see here <laughs> when I get on the right meter we're on the top scale and that's showing 12 milliampers of current which is right where it should be on receive and you can see that it's in the receive mode because the green lights on now if I put this little jumper uh, connector on it goes into the transmit mode and there it goes so now it's in the transmit mode showing the red light there the current then I have set to what do I got there? 62. 62 milliampers. Should be 15 milliampers over what it is with the control turned all the way down. That's with that control turned all the way down for the uh, bias. So we want to set the bias 15 milliampers higher than it is with the bias control turned all the way down. And you turn the bias control fully clockwise fully clockwise before you start and that turns the bias completely off then you bring it back counterclockwise slowly until you get the current you want and the current that you want is 15 milliampers over what it is with that control turned all the way down counterclockwise no clockwise clockwise then you turn it counterclockwise to bring the current level up. And I did that till I got uh, 64 milliampers. Anyhow, I just disconnected the power from it here. I did put a dummy load bulb on. It's a number 47 bulb. Uh, I don't think there'll be any transmitting going on with this thing just sitting here like this while we do the preliminary testing. But I wanted to be sure, so it was easy to do, so I put it on there. Some of the things I found out here, the toroid wires, those were hard to tin. I tried tinning them by heating them and just putting the solder to it. I used different soldering irons. I even used a big heavy gun. I could not get them to go right. I found out that I had to scrape those with an X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade. You could use a small pocket knife. That would work just fine. And I think it takes about 20 scrapes on each one. You've got to go round and round turning it until you get all of that enamel off of that wire and they soldered really nice then. I then tinned them and then soldered them. And when you tin them, if you, if you hold the toroid right up so that the lead wire lead is pointing down and then bring your soldering iron on the length of it and just bring it down slowly, you will find the solder all comes off of that wire because sometimes it'll glob on the wire. Okay, now keeping the parts in place. Uh, putting these little connectors in, you can see I used alligator clips. I held them like that. I soldered the outer two pins and then 
removed the clip and soldered the inner pins. And when I was soldering the toroids in, I also held the toroids in place with an alligator clip, just like that. This board does not have, I do not have the, uh, the little uh, zip, zip ties, tie wraps on this board yet. So they're not on there. Uh, and I think I'm going to try E6000 glue. That's a craft glue and it is just super for coils. A couple of little dabs of that will hold that coil on there just perfect. And I thought, I'm going to try that. So I just love that E6000 glue because you can coat coils with it and it will not affect the inductance at all. Where do you get it? You get it at a craft store or Walmart has it in the craft department. So I really like that glue and that glue really works super on plastics, I have found. So I held those toroids. Then I'm demonstrating here, there's a, uh, a little uh, inductor just a little inductor looks like a resistor and I clipped that on here like that to show you you can hold in other parts like that I did not use it on the inductors where I used it like this was in soldering in the sockets for the ICs and soldering on the relay I held them in with the little wire leads underneath by clipping on an alligator clip in this fashion then you solder once you get a couple of them soldered, then you're all set. You can solder the whole thing, take the clip off. And what else have I got on my list here? Uh, the LEDs, uh, I tested those with this uh, Heathkit regulated power supply. I set it for 10 milliampers and then uh, just clipped the LEDs on there, which is really nice to do it that way. But you've got to have a regulated supply that will not supply more than 10 milliampers. You don't want to hurt those LEDs. Okay, you need small solder when you're working on things like this. I use .031 solder or .015. I had some 15. I tried that. It worked good. But I used a 031 for some of the bigger components that needed a little more solder. And let's see here. I found a small piece of copper strip and used that for the heat sink. I think I mentioned that already. I cleaned the underside of the board with 91% alcohol and a toothbrush after I got the parts all in. I tested all parts. I could test the diodes, the LEDs, and the capacitors. I went through the whole parts list, counted all the parts, and checked them off on the parts list, and that's when I found that one .001 monolithic capacitor was missing. I inspected all solder connections on the board with a high power magnifying glass. And let's see, uh, and another thing I had trouble now, you might say, hey, did you make any mistakes? Yeah, I did. I wound one of the toroids backwards, and I had to rewind it. So I had to take the wire off and rewound it again. And I wanted to show you here, too, while you're soldering, I don't like, I don't like breathing all those solder fumes. So I have this little bitty fan here, and the little bitty fan blows across my soldering area here, and that blows the fumes away, so I'm not breathing the fumes. Okay, let's see. Uh, when you plug in your band board, uh, you notice here, this is the band board. This is a 40 meter board I got plugged in there. Right here, it says J5. Right here, it says J5. Right here, it says J6. And right here, it says J6. So if you want to check to see that you're plugging these in correctly and not turning them around, you can just look here. J5 goes to J5. So that helps you orient those boards. Uh, let's see. On this antenna connector, when you put it in here, it's got two little wires on the back. You've got to bend those around to make them fit into the holes. It's not a big deal. Really easy to do. I've got a few other things here, too, that I ran into. Uh, let's see. I wound that toroid backwards. I had to rewind it. Uh, I, I, I lost a 600 and peak affair, 680 picofarad capacitor. I had dropped it on the bench and, and I found that one. So uh, that was not missing. Uh, let's see. I inspected all soldering for unsoldered joints, cold soldered joints, solder splashes, and solder bridges with a big magnifying glass. 
And let's see here. What else? And I guess that's it. That's it. Okay, you might notice that I am working on a box here so I can stand up and work. Uh, when I sit at, on a stool and try to work here on the workbench, I, uh, I get a uh, backache. I'm 77 years old, so uh, I've been standing while I'm working, and I put this thing on a box so I can stand right up here and stand up straight, and I can work like that no problem. And uh, I keep all my tools right here in a little tray. Got the tray at the Goodwill store. A resale store, or you could even buy you can buy trays like that at the dollar store too, and uh, they're cheap. Keep your tools right in there, and when you solder or cut cut a wire or whatever, you can just toss the tool back in the tray. I think that works out really good. I try to show the little things, the little things that make the job easier. Let's see, is there anything else I want to mention here? I guess that's it. This is completed now, and this is the final assembly video. And uh, now that it's completed, I want to get ready to put it on the air, but I'm going to have to find a computer to use and set the computer up here and then, <laughs> then get the computer program for this uh, FT8 that I want to run. And then I'm going to have to get the two uh, jumper leads to connect this to the computer. I don't know if I have those or not, so it may be a while before I actually have an on-the-air video but I do plan to do that sometime in the future so this is the last one video number four on assembling the uh, QRP guys digital DSP transceiver and I say I give it I give it two thumbs thumbs up my other thumb is holding the camera <laughs> 73's and good 